please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. 18. Sir Malcolm Grant, I'd like to perhaps open with you. Healthcare is perhaps the most critical sector that's being transformed uh, using technology and the NHS in the UK is one of the most innovative organizations when it comes to leveraging creativity and technology. So please share with us some examples of situations where patients have embraced Createch in a big way and also perhaps uh, situations where patients have been apprehensive of Createch because patient trust is perhaps the biggest challenge when it comes to healthcare, isn't it? I think that's absolutely right. It's also another facet of healthcare in that context, which is most access to Createch for patients is mediated through professionals. And patients are in a condition where they're at their most vulnerable. Uh, they're unwell, they're uncertain about what their future will be, will they live or die, will they be disabled for life? And so having access to the most innovative technologies will make that huge difference. But for most of the time, it's the professional who wheels them into the room with the x-ray machine or the CT scanner or the operating theater. And the patient doesn't really see or perhaps completely understand what is the innovative technology that lies behind that. So I'd turn it on its head. I think the other issue about the future of healthcare is to the extent to which we can move patients away from that dependency relationship and use technologies as a way of putting patients at the heart of access to healthcare, the mobile phone, will undoubtedly be a major factor of this. Uh, people will have their medical records on their phone. Uh, we can create algorithms which will allow people to understand their uh, drug adversities uh, and understand what an exercise regime might be like and provide incentives for people to behave differently. JLR is, uh, is one of the biggest investors into research and development in the auto sector in the UK. Uh, how do you constantly maintain a climate of innovation and creativity and uh, how do you successfully marry that with advanced technologies? At the end of the day, business is people, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, I'm quite sure that you not just can dictate uh, creativity or push it top down. You have to create the right atmosphere. And in terms of people, it means you have to hire the right people. At Jaguar Land Rover, we have just tripled our workforce. So we have a lot of outside in, a lot of new views in the company helps. But it also means you have to create teams and you have to take care of the, about your employees already in the business. So that means we have to train. We have set up an academy in 2015. Meanwhile, we have 27 academies around the world. And we are spending around about 120 million right. just to train people in our company. And more than 10,000 so, uh, people are doing modules, learning actively. Mm. That's around about 25% of our workforce are more or less permanently in lessons, learning in the academy. But it's also quite clear from my point of view, it's not just these kind of things. We have to make sure that we get the right diversity. Diversity in quite clear gender, diversity, nevertheless also in thinking, in race, in other elements, because that gives the added value, that gives totally new insights. Mm. And last but not least, I guess we also think about bricks and stones, the facilities, the right climate, light, then for instance, color schemes, the right heating. So it sounds simple, but these are kind of elements, elements which make uh, this kind, which, en which enriches at the end of the day uh, the in infrastructure and with a better infrastructure, a better climate, we frame a certain opportunity for creativity. Right. Jeremy, your company answers three fundamental questions for all your clients and which is uh, what could you do, what should you do and how should you achieve that, right? Uh, so what are some of the biggest barriers to new ideas that you come across and how do you really navigate some of these barriers? Um, well, in some ways we don't really come up against too, too many barriers because rather than, uh, rather than just looking for a new idea, what we're looking for is the right idea. Mm. Uh, and that's different for each client. 
Uh, and in terms of, in terms of uh, how we do it, it's process driven. So um, whenever you're developing a new product, it's, it's, it's a phased approach. Uh, and there's some, you know, you need the sort of highest quality of information in order to inform what you're doing. Okay? Right. So you need to understand the market that you're aiming for. You need to understand the competitive landscape. You, you fundamentally need to understand who you're targeting. You know, who are your users? Who, who are the people who are going to be using this thing? You know, uh, understand them really well. Uh, and then you need to sort of look to the future. You need to, uh, you need to be looking at emergent behavior, so how people are changing and how society is changing. Uh, so, and to do that is really sort of a, a mixture of sort of trend analysis and looking at sort of progressive users, so people who are living uh, tomorrow's lifestyle today. So a bit like the sort of biohackers and, and people like that that, that, we, that we're seeing. All right. It's time for a short break. Stay tuned as the discussion continues on the other side. Let me bring in Toby also at this point. Uh, as, as the CEO of a very successful Indian company, how do you see Createc impacting the consumers here in this room today? And uh, are the opportunities and challenges of Createc in an emerging economy like ours any different from what they are in other parts of the world? So um, our products are industrial but uh, they flow through to consumers. E eventually everything, you know, so our products go into aeroplanes and things like tractors, bulldozers, drill rigs. Uh, and uh, what's really interesting is that we uh, manufacture in UK and in India. Uh, I'm originally from Bangalore, uh, which is the Silicon Valley of India. We've produced, we've set up facilities in Bristol and Swindon where there's a very rich wealth of engineering capability. And these two uh, locations have partnered very well. So we've become the world's largest hydraulic pump maker. All our parts are made in the UK with robots and artificial intelligence. And it's really very high-end detailed part manufacturing. But the way you put it together is craftsmanship. And there we use our Bangalore workers. And we married together very high-end digital manufacturing in a robotic environment with low cost of capital in the UK and artisanal craftsmanship in India with low cost of labor. So it's a business innovation or business model innovation, uh, not just product innovation. And I think that brings uh, best value to our customers that then flow down to consumers. Right. So, uh, taking off from that, Dr. Speth, do some crystal ball gazing for us. Is the autonomous connected vehicle going to be the only way of the future? And uh, uh, how will the relationship between us humans and our mobility transform by 2030? I'm quite sure that it will not be the only, uh, let's say, relationship and the only way uh, to drive cars being driven autonomously. It's quite clear everybody talks about autonomous, and uh, so do we. But it's also quite sure that this industry is not really ready for today. It's not secure enough, neither from a cybersecurity point of view, nor from the technology we are using at the moment in the cars. Mm. Therefore, I personally try to avoid that we talk about autonomous cars. Right. Today, we should uh, talk about driver assistant cars. That is the way, I guess, we can proceed. But I'm also quite sure that in the near future we will see cars being driven more or less autonomous, but the steering wheel will be in the vehicles for a very long period of time. Healthcare is perhaps the most personal uh, uh, you know, service that any, any human uh, uh, can get into. So, uh, as far as trust is concerned, what role can creative communicators play in winning the trust of the public and really driving them towards leveraging Createc in the future? Healthcare in 10 years' time will be transformed from what it is now. But let me ask a, the bigger question, which is that however much we transform healthcare, that we will still have a huge burden of disease. In, in our societies. The first of them we don't really yet understand scientifically and it's called dementia. Uh, with an aging population, more and more people are losing uh, cognitive ability uh, at an older age. Uh, they're no longer going to be able to fu function fully as members of society. The second area which we can do something about is obesity. 
Levels of obesity across the world are rising quite steadily. They're quite acute in the USA and Australia and in the UK and many parts of Europe. And associated with obesity comes type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, certain types of cancer. We have children who are obese when they go to school. We have children, many more children who are obese when they come out of school. And we're sentencing them to a lifetime of disability. And the inability of society to move and to address these problems is deeply worrying. Politicians find it really very concerning because it becomes a, a thing that it's a nanny state and politicians can't interfere with our individual freedoms. But communication and design and imagination, I think, can help us to transform two of these major problems. All right, right. But one of the challenges is also that we humans are very risk averse. While it's great to talk about the future, uh, it's, it's quite another ball game to really delve into the future and pick up new habits. Like you said, we, we detest change most of the time. So uh, how do you really balance the human nature that's risk averse with cutting edge createch? Um, well, I think it's about, you know, you can't just have technology for technology's sake. Okay, there needs to be a fundamental human need attached to it. There needs to be, it needs to, you know, solve, solve a human need, right? And if, there, if, if it makes our lives easier, if it enables us in some way, uh, then we're more likely to sort of accept that technology. Cultural influences also play a role. Uh, Dynamatic is a company that spans across the globe, both in terms of manufacturing as well as customers. So uh, how important is it to address cultural influences in different parts of the world? And uh, how do you ensure that when you leverage Createch, it is in line with local communities and social and cultural uh, differences or, or you know, trends across the world? Yeah, I, th I think uh, it's basic uh, universal hum human values. So. Uh, we manufacture in India, Germany, UK, and we have uh, subsidiaries in uh, US and Singapore. Uh, so we sell everywhere, but we actually operate in uh, law-based societies. So it's much easier for us at least to have a context. Uh, we speak English across sites, so even in Germany, while they have uh, German within the manufacturing, but in our business communications, it's always English, which is a uh, uh, contribution of the United Kingdom. Uh, but uh, in terms of uh, the best part is to have mutual respect and uh, to follow really good ethical values. So let's uh, uh, talk a little bit about the future and imagining the future. Uh, Sir Grant, as far as experiencing healthcare is concerned, how is that going to change? Well, let's start approaching it in the way that Jeremy suggested just before. What is it we want to actually get to up there, 2030? And it's cancer. Can we eradicate cancer? Can we stop cancer being a killer of human beings? And we will get there. And the answer is by combining all of the technologies we've just been talking about. Uh, this requires, for example, artificial intelligence, which we're now using extensively in healthcare around pattern recognition, et cetera, using vast amounts of data, uh, 3D visualization of cancer tumors, being able to understand how to excise them. Uh, but much more importantly, we're going to use uh, the new life sciences technologies such as genomics and proteomics. And we will, I think, be able to get into a position where with a simple blood test, uh, we can test for the presence of tumor cells in the human body and intervene at a much earlier stage. What are the sort of maybe top three risks that we need to watch out for while we are exploring the power of Createch? Um, I, think, I think you've touched on one probably is, is privacy. Uh, I think that would be a, a big thing. I think, um, you know, we, we do some studies on uh, on sort of generational differences, um, and the millennials have been very open with their with sharing their data, uh, and um, have paid some of the prices of sort of sharing too much. In some cases, you know, some of these sort of stories of um, you know people sharing too much on social media, for example, uh, and um, you know, Gen Z have a very different attitude towards sharing data. Uh, so these are sort of kids who are, you know, sort of 16 and below. Um, and I think they're going to they're change the way that we, that we see privacy, for example. Uh, and that's going to be even more important as new streams of data and, you know, the Internet of Things comes on board where we've got uh, people have even more data connecting with each other, you know. Um, so I think probably 
that's going to be one of, one, one of the big ones. Right. And Toby, as uh, chairman of the uh, National Institute of Design here in India, what are you looking at as your immediate top two or three steps to promote and drive Createch here in the Indian context? Okay, so firstly, uh, design also encompasses uh, our cities. And, uh, you know, India, we've had a terrible record in building new cities. The last great new city we built was Chandigarh, and to the, you know, uh, to the credit of the government of the day, they uh, got uh, the best architect in the world at that time. We have the same opportunity at Amravati now with uh, Sir Norman Foster coming in and designing a brand new city in the east, uh, which I think will uh, allow a lot of our young designers and architects to learn uh, new ways, and this is a city that we are building in the 21st century. So it will also, from the ground up, have a lot of uh, the smart uh, city and a uh, lot of uh, the learnings from the past. So I think uh, our society itself will be uh, transformed with such examples and many more. Uh, the new in uh, National Institute of Design is also partnering with uh, some British universities on design, so we we think this is going to be great. As a final wrap-up, I'm going to give each one of you 30 seconds to just uh, come up with one step that we can take today in order to design a better tomorrow. And uh, I'd like to start with you, Dr. Speth. Let's keep it under 30 seconds each. I guess the theme of today is collaboration. And innovation is collaboration. And therefore, if I think if we take out the mindset in sharing and combining and so making the society a better place to live, that's enough for the day. All right, that's well said. So I would Grant. I just pick up on the issue of data and privacy, which is at its most acute in relation to patient care. And I think we need to find new ways of ensuring that patients understand that sharing their data for the benefit of others is a major step forward. In other words, it's almost a compact. Other people's data is being used to advance my health care. I would wish my data be, should be shared to advance other people's health care and take a more general and generous view of how we use our data. All right. Toby? I think uh, if we can all individually minimize our use of plastic, we're going to have a much better world if we're poisoning our oceans and our rivers and our cities and ourselves. And I think at a personal level, I've already stopped using plastic in my home. Wonderful. Jeremy? Um, I think uh, whatever it is you're doing, you need, to, uh, you, you need to center what you're doing around people. You need to, you need to think about people first. Um, and uh, a human-centered design and, and, and innovation uh, sort of leads the way in some of that thinking. And, and the technology really has um, great benefits in, uh, in advancing humanity, um, uh, providing we keep that in mind, that we use things like artificial intelligence and, and robotics, um, and it's governed in the way that is for the benefit of humankind. I think that's really important that, we, that, we, that we're, we're proactive about how we legislate and, uh, and, and regulate the use of um, particularly artificial intelligence. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, we will, of course, be waiting to discover the potential that Createch has across various sectors. Thank you all very much.